Hey guys, welcome back to Kit Fox Aircraft. It's another beautiful day out, blue skies, light winds. We promised we'd bring up some other cabin options again that we talked about last week. And uh, so here we are. We briefly talked about the prefab kit, walking around within the cockpit. If you look over here, this is kind of how your kit gets packaged and comes to you. So you have a packing list. Uh, we'll show all the individual parts. We're just going to grab the prefab kit out of here now, bring it over, and show you some of the stuff that's in there. You get a lot of little component items, which are really quite nice. We talked about the flap handle bracket. That's the detent bracket for the flap handle. Of course, there's the adjustable rudder pedal bracket. They're pre-made. So we'll just go ahead and pull some of this stuff out of here and give you an idea. They're individually labeled, marked. Of course, that'll correspond with your builder's manual. Um, you know, from the pedal brackets we talked about. One really neat feature is the spar doublers. These are put on the spar, they're pre-drilled, plated, all ready to go, a little bit of cleanup, and they're, they're re ready to be installed. Uh, so again, back to the flat brackets, rudder pedal brackets, uh, spar brackets. And if you noticed, each label over here has you know, the, the part number, the description, the quantity, and they're all individually wrapped. There's a few other parts in here as well that you can see. There's a template that we include that sets your leading edge for the PVC leading edge that goes on the Super Sport Wing. So that works out really well. We'll go ahead and put that away. Hopefully that answered most of the questions about the prefab kit. There's actually quite a bit to it. Parts are pretty much pre-manufactured and ready to be installed. So the next thing we're going to kind of breathe off into is the parking brake kit. We briefly talked about that and I showed you some of those parts as well. Again, neatly packed, labeled. Packing list installed. Shuttle valve from Grove Aircraft. It's a nice little uh, parking brake valve. Has two different handles. There is a specific handle. Got your Nyloflow tubing. Laser engraved placard for the parking brake. Of course, fittings, bushings. This is actually a mounting bracket. That goes in the uh, underneath the center console because you saw how the brake actuated on the center console. This bracket's actually mounted to hold the parking brake in place. Of course, you have all your miscellaneous hardware and those items that go along with that. So the next up is going to be the builder's toolkit. Something we get asked a lot of: Are there any special tools that are needed uh, to build a kit box? Really, special tools is a broad spectrum because is a Clico a special tool? To some people it would be. It's used throughout sheet metal applications, but you may not have done sheet metal before, so a Clico would be a special tool to you. Fixtures, you can actually cover the fuselage, the wings, do that stuff without special fixtures using saw horses. It's nice to have a couple little turn fixtures. We use them around here frequently. Where you're building one, we're building many. It's very easy to go ahead and, and build fixtures for us to do that. Uh, so we'll pull out the Builder's Toolkit. Again, same principle. There's a lot of tools here uh, that are just not common tools you'd see in your toolkit if you have a nice toolkit. Again, packing list, labeled. So pop rivet. We do have some pop rivets, and there are some squeeze rivets as well. So you'll get a pop rivet gun. There's a hobby iron. Yes, we actually do know how, need to know how to iron as we go on. The hobby iron is nice for doing the small stuff in the corners around the... Uh, around the edges when you're doing the fabric covering. Similar to a monocoat airplane when you're doing the fabric covering. Thermometer, you want to accurately calibrate your iron when you're doing the polyfiber system. Of course, we have number 30 Clecos and number 40 Clecos installed. I should do that the other way around. It's number 40s and 30s, actually. For those that will give me grief about doing them backwards. Uh, pinking shears or scissors with serrated edges for uh, polyfiber pinking. There's acrylic drill bits in there. Your windshield is included with your kit. So you'll actually have acrylic bits. You do not want to use a standard bit on acrylic. It will crack it. So always use an acrylic bit. A swedge tool that is, that's for swedging the cables. There's a couple of those that need to be done. No sense in buying a high-end pricey tool to do that when you can do it with a simple one here. Clico pliers for your Clicos. And then there's some other miscellaneous things from the, you know, weather guard, permatex, um, uh, gasket dressing, sealing for, for sealing up some of the fittings. 
And then there's, of course, Dixie cups we've put in here, a couple syringes, so you can apply the high sol using a syringe. It gives it a nice application for that. One of the items that you probably will not have in your toolkit, even if you are a builder, are reamers. They're very uncommon deburring tool. So reamers are not something that you'll normally have in a toolbox. And in the kit comes the, all the reamers you're going to need for building the kit box. Uh, there's there's uh, five different ones here. And that kind of is the builder's toolkit in a nutshell. There's a couple other miscellaneous items in here. There's standard number 30 drills, number 40 drills, um, you know, a whole bunch of little, you know, there's popsicle sticks for crying out loud for mixing the high saw if you want to use it. The next up is the cargo bay kit. Cargo bay kit, there's two different versions. It is an option. One is 24 inches wide, 32 inches deep. The other one is 24 inches wide and 48 inches deep. The baggage sack itself, it, it, that's the floorboard. The baggage sack itself, the extended one has some other added features and pockets inside, whereas the uh, shorter one does not. Um, and we're going to take a walk over the fuselage here and give you a shot at taking a look at a couple of those. So here's your standard, or standard, your, your short floorboard for the cargo bay. Here's the extended one. And because it, the length, it has to be in two boards to actually get it into the fuselage to fit it in. I'm going to move these out of the way for a second and show you the baggage sack itself. So this is the baggage sack. It's Cordura and it's really cleverly designed. There's a lot to it. Inside there's Velcro latches that will end up going over the tubing in various places. So let's just lay this in here real quick. So again, I was saying about the Velcro. So we have Velcro on both sides. There's Velcro latches here, and these will actually come over the sides of the tube. So they'll end up So it'll be velcroed like so. It has a flap that covers up this area here. This tucks in, has a little headset sack. Pouch comes over the top. When you get it all installed and laid in there, the floorboards actually go inside the baggage sack, get bolted down to hard points within the fuselage. A lot of people, we like to do it here. We will actually buy some extra Cordura and actually cover the floorboard so that it's actually black inside. You can do it with what we've called mouse fur or even a fabric from a fabric store, glue that down to the top of the cargo bay. Now, one of the items that uh, we've had before is a hinge turtle deck. Ironically enough, we've had difficulty with the whole Lexan turtle deck that we developed to hinge it effectively without really bad leaking. One of our builders, very uh, a master builder actually, is very, very clever does a fantastic job, John Ev, uh, Evans. He found a hinge that is a plastic hinge. It's nicely done, and it's the right gap to fit on the turtle deck. When you have the extended cargo bay, it's really nice to have this feature. It's nice in either case, but it's really nice to have this feature with the extended one because you can literally, tails up on this, you can literally take it up and you have full access into the baggage area. So it's a really nice feature, especially in the tail dragger configuration, because you can reach right over into that and it works out really well. So that kind of covers the cargo bay and the uh, hinge turtle deck. So we're going to go into some of the cabin stuff we've talked about before. Uh, one of those was the cabin heat, and we do have a cabin heater kit here. On the Rotax engines, we actually end up with a uh, using the coolant for the Rotax as our heat. Real similar to how the cars do it. Okay, so we have a radiator that is mounted inside the cockpit. On top of that radiator is a pair of fans, and we'll put both fans on top. Underneath the, this is all part of the hardware to attach to the two fans. It has two bolts that go down, capture the radiator, and then of course on the bottom, you would have a little heat deflector that mounts in there to help deflect the heat a little bit off to the sides because it's actually mounted in the center of the cockpit. So we're trying to force the air a little bit over towards the feet of the, of the pilot and the co-pilot. That takes care of the cabin heat. 
wow, we've got a lot to talk about here. You forget how many options that we actually have in here. Eyeball vents are, is another cabin option that we put for air ventilation inside the cockpit. There's one on each side, go in the, uh, the instrument panel. They're fed to NACAs on the side of the uh, cowling. And the eyeball vent is just that, two two-inch eyeballs. Well, eyeball vents anyway. Here's the NACAs that go into the side of the, the cowlings. And then of course the scat tube to go along with it and some hose clamps to mount the scat tube to the, to the NACA vent. And back to the eyeball. Dual pin door latch. We briefly touched on that last time and we've got it on this airplane here. It's a nice feature that actually we say pin. It's, it's a handle in the middle and that handle actually actuates two pins that go forward and aft. It makes a positive lock on the forward and aft side of it. We started using this with the Speedster application with uh, Kyle Franklin doing the aerobatics. As, as our standard door latch is a single over-centering latch rule similar to the old, the old wing windows that you'd see in the cars. So it's a single overhead and we were worried when he was doing snap rolls um, that uh, the doors would pop open. So we developed the dual pin door latch for that purpose. Easier to see on the, on the airplane, but you will have the, the handle, which is a uh, machined handle, some brackets, the pin guides. There's two 28 inch rods. I don't have the rods sitting out here today. I apologize for that. But the two rods that go into it as well. And of course, you've got the springs and the hardware and the um, uh, brackets to get the dual pin. This is probably the most complicated part of it. Here is the actual handle itself. Nicely machined part. So that's the dual pin door latch. And then last but not least, we get a lot of questions on upholstery. So let's talk about upholstery for a minute. A little bit longer item to talk about is the upholstery kit is a very complete kit. It has floor carpets with stick boots, side carpets with pockets for your uh, pilot operating handbook or for uh, a checklist or any of those things. Um, those so that you have two side kick panels, the floor carpets with the stick boots, the fabric to cover the center console, the side consoles, fabric for the glare shield, fabric for the seat. Um, and then fabric to cover the fuel lines that go up behind you uh, to the wing tanks. On top of that, you have the seat cushions. And there's three different fabrics of seat cushions that we have. We have the Cordura, Velour, and the Synergy Suede. The Synergy Suede is by far the most popular. It is also the most expensive. It has a very nice finish. All of them clean up and wear wonderfully. We have a, more of a color selection with the velour in the Synergy Suede than what we have with the Cordura. So we have some color options there that you'll see for the Synergy Suede, some color options for the Cordura, and then of course the color options for the velour. We have a sheet that you would fill out when you do your upholstery kits that will tell us what color is your base color. Normally your seats come in basically three colors. You'll have a primary color, which is this top part here, secondary color, which is here, and then a piping color that goes around the outside edge for the piping. Now, they can all be the same if you want them to. It's, it's your call. Those are your choices. When you finally decide what your paint scheme is going to be on your airplane, it's a good idea to get the upholstery in early. Lead times are very long on upholstery, uh, but they're well worth it. They're nicely done. Temper foam is also an option in here. It's an inexpensive option, and that's the the space age foam, memory foam, but they call it temper foam. Generally it goes in the seat, not in the seat backs, and that's, uh, it's a layered foam so it doesn't stay really hard when it gets cold, but it gives, gives to you and form fits for you. The, the one item that's a little different than a lot of other airplanes, we talked about the adjustable rudder pedals, that you bring the pedals to you, that keeps you on the center of gravity with the airplane. Because of that, in different heights, we want to get your sight picture in the right position. So a lot of times you'll do custom cushions depending on your sight picture. The standard uh, thicknesses are one inch, one and a half inch. Uh, they go down to half inch and go up to three and four inches. The, the, it's been pretty um, diverse of how, much, how many different thicknesses there's actually been. Well, that's how you can adjust your sight picture as opposed to a taller person, shorter person, get the upholstery set or get the seat set to the height that works best for you. 
And that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks for coming out and visiting us today. And until uh, next week, we'll see you again.